Hello everyone, my name is Kevin Dick and I'm the lead author on this paper entitled Chaos Game Representations and Deep Learning for Proteome-Y Protein Prediction. This first part of the presentation was what I consider to be a video-based graphical abstract where I tried to introduce all the elements of the paper um, in as intuitive a way as possible, uh, kind of like uh, a graphical abstract would be in a given paper but uh, in video form. Briefly put, this work explores the effective ways to use chaos game representations, or CGRs, given that they are an emerging means of visualizing and representing genomic and proteomic sequences. There currently exist many open questions related to their effective application to various computational tasks, and in this work we begin to address some of these questions by comparing four variants of the chaos game to generate CGR imagery as part of a multi-class classification task to identify the source organism for a given protein. This is done at the proteome-wide level. We propose a novel nodal configuration for icosagon and 20-flake CGRs, and by using two different data sets, we perform fine-tuning using seven deep convolutional neural network architectures and report the modest performance over random using 56 different test conditions. And so what exactly is chaos game representation, or CGR? Through the 1980s, the field of physics known as nonlinear dynamics, chaotic dynamical systems, or chaos, simply put, garnered much interest and in 1990, Dr. H. Joel Jeffrey proposed the use of CGR to visually depict gene structure. Specifically, the chaos game is an iterated function system that allows the visual representation of the fractal structure of a sequence of possibly infinite length. That is, a one-dimensional sequence of arbitrarily length is encoded into a two-dimensional CGR where there's a desirable property that each point in CGR space encodes both local and global sequence information. The classical example of the chaos game representation is to consider n equals 3 distinct and non-collinear points on a plane and assign to each a pair of outcomes from a six-sided die. For example, node 1 will be given uh, the values 1 and 2, node 2 will be given the values 3 and 4, and node 3 will be assigned the values 5 and 6. We place an initial starting point equidistant from the three nodes, and then a die will be repeatedly cast to generate a sequence of random numbers. For each of these outcomes, a line from the current position is drawn to the node assigned that outcome, and the current position is moved to the midpoint of that line. This process, when repeated ad infinitum, results in the fractal known as the Sierpinski triangle. Jeffrey first proposed the application of the CGR algorithm to genomic sequences comprising an n equals 4 nodal square with each vertex assigned one character from the alphabet A, C, G, and T for adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine. Resultant fractals are therefore constructed from squares rather than n equals 3 triangles. As in the previous example, an initial point is set equidistant to the four nodes, and for each character in a genomic sequence, a line is drawn from the current point to the corresponding node, and the current point is moved to the midpoint of that line, setting a new point in the plane. This is then repeated until the sequence is exhausted. The use of n equals 4 CGRs for genomic sequences has been increasingly studied through the last two decades and has been found to be effective for several tasks, including the prediction of phylogenetic relationships. It is only during the last decade that efforts to meaningfully represent protein sequences by means of CGR has been undertaken. With an n equals 20 alphabet of amino acids, the meaningful representation of these sequences is still an open question and under current exploration. One approach is to project the n equals 20 alphabet into an n equals 4 alphabet by leveraging codon mapping. While trinucleotide sequences have a many-to-one mapping to an amino acid, it is non-trivial to reverse translate an amino acid sequence back to its original trinucleotide sequence. However, Deshavane and Tuffrey proposed a fixed reverse translation mapping, useful in converting amino acid sequences back into a genomic sequence while conserving performance in predicting protein functional families. We leverage this as our first representation. In this work, we propose a novel relative orientation of amino acids within a 20-sided icosagon. The polar amino acids are colored and separated from the non-polar amino acids. The polar amino acids are then further separated based on their charge, where the negative are depicted in blue, neutral in gray, and the positives in red. Each of these groups is then sorted in clockwise order from highest molecular weight to the smallest within their respective groups. The two figures here depict how an icosagon can be inscribed within a square parameterized by width of 2r. 
This is used to generate two additional representations of a given sequence, the chaos game representation as well as the frequency chaos game representation, otherwise known as an FCGR. It's important to make a distinction here that playing the chaos game on a regular polygon doesn't strictly enforce the self-similar fractal relationship between points that exists in the n equals 4 representation. And to explicitly differentiate these representations, we will refer to them as CGR star or FCGR star. Nonetheless, the n-gon CGR stars have been found to be useful in representing amino acid sequences in a number of different research applications. For the n equals 20 amino acid alphabet, the 20-sided polygon, the icosagon, is ideally suited. Promisingly, in 2015, Tsanov generalized the CGR for n's greater than 4 upwards to infinity gons and infinity flakes. The distinction between an n gon and an n flake is that the latter is strictly non-overlapping, that is to say, variable scaled n flakes are precisely separable from one another. This generalization enables the creation of strictly self-similar n-flakes with the most recent protein-based applications of these leveraging the n20 flake by Lochelle et al. We collected proteome-wide sequences for 12 organisms of varying evolutionary distance. Two datasets were then created. The first comprised a stratified sample of 1,000 proteins for 11 organisms, and a second comprised a stratified sample of 5,000 proteins for 6 organisms. For each protein, we then generated the four FCGR star representations and split these into distinct training, validation, and independent test sets according to a 60-20-20 split. Each representation was then used to fine-tune seven different pre-trained deep CNN models and the performance of each representation using each model was reported. We tabulated the performance across the 28 test conditions for each data set, noting that generally the majority of representation model pairs appear only to achieve a modest accuracy. In fact, both the AlexNet and SqueezeNet models for each data set do not appear to have learned the task at all and report results equivalent to a random model. While ResNet 18 has the highest average model performance for both datasets and appears to have benefited from all representations, it's the VGG16 model with batch normalization that has the highest reported accuracy using the 20 flake representation in both cases. Interestingly, both the n equals 4 DNA FCGR and the n equals 20 amino acid FCGRs share the highest average performance among the representations over both datasets. Additionally, contrary to expectation, while the n equals 20 amino acid FCGR star theoretically contains greater information by capturing the relative frequency of pixels, the binarized n equals 20 amino acid CGR star had a larger average performance across the models for both datasets. We posit that this may be due to the increased brightness of the CGR star as compared to the FCGR star. Given that these representations are incredibly sparse and the fine-tuning is being performed upon models pre-trained on ImageNet, it may be that generally brighter images would increase performance. This hypothesis may be tested by representing the FCGR stars on coarser-grained resolution imagery to both reduce sparsity and increase overall image brightness. By representing sequences at the individual protein level, as opposed to representing entire genomes or entire proteomes, the resultant imagery is commensurately darker and considerably less information is available from which a model might learn. To evaluate this hypothesis, future work might consider reducing the image resolution to generate more densely represented FCGR stars. With the highest performing model and representation combination, that is VGG16 with batch normalization and the 20 flake FCGR, we inspected the training accuracy and loss with respect to each training epoch for both datasets. Interestingly, a consistent improvement in the validation performance over the training performance is observed, suggested that the sample validation set consists of a quote unquote easier set of samples than those in the training set. Finally, to better understand why the test accuracy is only modest, we look at the confusion matrices themselves. It is immediately apparent that the majority of the samples of the stratified 1000 dataset are being predicted to belong to D. melanogaster, fruit fly. A number of expected errors are also apparent for each dataset. Many of the mouse errors are attributed to evolutionarily proximal organisms such as rat, human, and bull. Similarly, many of the yeast errors are attributed to S. pombe and C. albicans. The converse is also true for C. albicans. 
The model perform it the best for uh, Drosophila melanogaster, C. albicans, mouse, and yeast, and fail to effectively classify the proteins for the remaining seven organisms. Combining yeast and C. albicans, these three groupings are all evolutionarily distant from one another, suggestive that the model may not be sufficiently large enough to represent more distinct evolutionarily relationships, making the task more difficult. This hypothesis is evidenced in the stratified 5K results as well, where the majority of the errors between yeast are attributed to S. pombe and vice versa, and also among the four ma mammals. Many prior studies applying CGR have achieved considerably improved performance by both leveraging denser CGRs and considered more evolutionally proximal organisms. In conclusion, the use of chaos game representation has been demonstrated for a growing number of bioinformatic applications and several open questions must be explored to effectively apply CGR to each task. In this work, we sought to address some of these questions by comparing four variants of the chaos game to generate FCGR star imagery used as part of an 11 class and 6 class classification task to assign a given protein to an organism. Only modest performance was observed over the 56 test conditions, highlighting certain uh, shortcomings in effectively leveraging CGR. Many of the insights from this work promise to orient subsequent studies. Thank you very much, and I look forward to answering any questions you might have.